Hello there, welcome to our channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 and we're on Learning Aim A1 and we're going to be looking at intermolecular forces. But to start with, we're going to be looking at whether a bond is polar or non-polar because we must understand that before we can do the van der Waals dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding. First of all, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not? Um, your support is very much appreciated, so please use the like and the comments features and let me know what you think. So we do need some prior knowledge before we can do this polar or non-polar bonds. We need to know what covalent bonding is. So if you haven't watched covalent bonding, I suggest you use the link in the description below and you watch that one first. So we do need to know about this term electronegativity. Now a definition for electronegativity is the measure of the ability of an atom to attract the bonding pair of electrons in a covalent bond. Now we actually look at this in detail in learning aim A2, so there'll be more on this in a future video. But for now, all we need to be aware of is that as we look at the periodic table, if we move from left to right, electronegativity increases. Also, if we move from bottom to top, electronegativity increases. So that means electronegativity increases from bottom left to top right. Now we don't need to be able to explain this just yet, but we will in learning AMA too, so look out for that one. We do not talk about group eight or group zero, the noble gases, when we talk about electronegativity because they won't form covalent bonds. So we can't talk about electronegativity of group zero or group eight. That makes fluorine then the king of electronegativity. Fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. A covalent bond then. So here we have a shared pair of electrons between two nuclei. And that pair of electrons is attracted to both nuclei. So it's kind of like a tug of war here. We've got a pair of electrons stuck between the two nuclei. Now, if we were to look at those two nuclei being chlorine, then they are both identical elements. They both have the exact same electronegativity. That means that those electrons are perfectly shared between those two atoms. So there's a perfectly equal share. We would then say that this bond is non-polar. So what if the atoms were different then in this covalent bond? Let's look at fluorine and chlorine. So the atom on the right is now fluorine, the atom on the left is now chlorine. Now fluorine was more electronegative because it was above the chlorine in the periodic table, so those electrons are pulled closer to the fluorine. And this means we have a polar bond between the chlorine and the fluorine. The F is slightly negative and the chlorine is slightly positive. That delta stands for slightly. Let's look then at chlorine and sulfur. This time, chlorine is more electronegative than the sulfur because it's to the right of it in the periodic table. So those electrons are pulled closer to the chlorine because it's more electronegative. This results in a polar bond. And this time, it's the chlorine that's delta negative. That means slightly negative. That symbol delta is slightly. And the sulfur is slightly positive. To summarise then, we need to know about this term electronegativity being a measure of the ability of the atom to attract the bonding pair of electrons in a covalent bond. The covalent bond is said to be non-polar if there's no difference in electronegativity. And the bond is said to be polar if there is a difference in electronegativity. And we can use the periodic table to determine electronegativity because it increases from left to right and bottom to top. So from bottom left to top right. And that's it for this video. Um, please look out for the next one where we're going to look at Van der Waals intermolecular forces.